Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yabashai, Baishim Braka Kudash Barakatom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh Baishim Yabashai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well in peace and salutations to Yaakim out there pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. This is the brother Raya with another video. And I'm going to start it off with Isaiah 34 verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read, No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. And what I want to focus on is where it says, No one of these shall fail. This is speaking of the prophecies in these scriptures which will all come to pass, such as the mandatory implementation of the mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip implant, the wars and rumors of wars, the race wars, the civil wars, the famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places, what have you. But in particular, the prophecy in Jeremiah 49 and 20 of those... Uh, Amalekite, Edomite imposters posing as the true children of Israel over in the land of Israel, provoking a war with Iran, which will not only drag in the United States, but Russia, China, and other nations as well to kick off that battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, or that war of Armageddon. This is Jeremiah 49 verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh that he hath taken against Edom, you so-called white people, you red Hebrew Edomites, and his purposes that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out, that minority of Amalekite Edomites over in the land of Israel, provoking a war with Iran, which will again draw in not just the United States, but Russia, China, and these other nations. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. And we're living in very beautiful times, Akim, because you have mainstream and independent news people talking about this very fact that Israel is going to provoke a war with Iran, which is going to cause the U.S. to come to their aid because the U.S. is just a puppet and a lapdog for the state of Israel. And a perfect example is this video on Kim Iverson's page titled, Lindsey Graham says Israel will attack Iran and the U.S. will follow. Surely the least of the flock will draw them out. And this all isn't happening by coincidence. Back in Isaiah 34 and 16, no one of these shall fail, these prophecies, none shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded. These prophecies are literally coming to pass right before our eyes, Akim. So now is not the time to be getting weak in the faith. Now you should have that fire in your spirit to push this word as hard as you can to make your calling and election sure. But let's get into this video. Today, Lindsey Graham pretty much gave us the blueprint of exactly how the United States is going to declare war on Iran. Uh, what he said was that Israel is going to basically go to war over the uranium enrichment that Iran is going to pursue. And after Israel goes to war, we're going to go and back up Israel. So this is some of what he has to say. It's a, a fairly long uh, interview that he gave, and we're going to break this up into little pieces because he actually said quite a lot. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh... Trump's not the problem that I told is. This drone was in international waters. International waters. So the, the drone was shot down off of the in the Strait of Hormuz, which is, by the way, nowhere near the United States. So they're kind of making it sound like, if you watch the news and if you're reading the news, they make it sound like, oh, Iran has acted very hostile towards the United States. They shot down one of our drones, acting like this drone was off the coast of California or off the coast of Florida. The United States has admitted to using this drone to spy on Iran. And Iran knows this, and so they shoot it down, knowing that it has nobody on board. And they said, we're sending you a message, don't spy on us, we're shooting down your spy drone, and now we're, we're apparently going, this is justifying us uh, potentially going to war with Iran because we shot down a drone in the Strait of Hormuz, which is right next to Iran. I also want you to take a look at this map here, which shows all of the American bases that are surrounding Iran. Now, Iran has no bases surrounding the United States. We have been surrounding Iran. They have not been surrounding us. So I don't know who's more hostile in this situation, but we were there sending a drone spying. We've now surrounded them in bases, and yet they're the hostile actor. So he goes on to say this. Uh, the president does not want a war with Iran or anybody else, but he is the commander in chief. 
And so when Abe was asked by the president, the prime minister of Japan, to deliver a message to the Iranians less talk, not only was he rebuffed, they attacked a Japanese ship while the Japanese prime minister is delivering a message from the American president. Let's see if we can negotiate. Okay, highly can all just BS propaganda to label Iran as the bad guy, the boogeyman. Tested. We don't know if Iran actually attacked the Japanese nor the Norwegian ship. That is not something that we actually have proof of. Uh, that very well could have been the CIA or it could have been Israel, for all we know, since we do know that Israel is the one that's going to end up marching us into war, as Lindsey Graham's about to tell us. So let's continue on here. Here's the way this is headed. If they start enrichment at the levels they're talking about in a few days, Israel over time will have to respond. There's one nation on the planet that's not going to give the Iranians a pass on their nuclear program. That's Israel. Israel will, if they, as a last resort, attack to prevent a nuclear armed Iran. We will come to their aid. As a last resort, he says. So he admits that, for one, Iran can, because we have no nuclear deal with them, remember? So the, the deal that we had with them was going to prevent them from enriching their uranium. Well, we tossed that deal out of the window a year ago, so they're free to do whatever they want. They still have a deal with Europe, but they announced to Europe on Monday that they were going to start their nuclear program again, that they were going to, they were going to start amping up their uranium enrichment in 10 days from Monday. So uh, now... We don't really have a, a reason to turn on them and say, we don't, you can't do this. And what's interesting about this is Israel was actually one of the main nations telling us, Israel and Saudi Arabia were the two nations that absolutely did not want a nuclear deal with Iran. They didn't want this deal. So now we don't have the deal. They got what they... Because the state of Israel wants to be the main hegemon or uh, main power in the Middle East, they want to balkanize all these other nations so they won't uh, be strong enough to come against them. They wanted, and now Iran is saying, okay, well, we have no deal, so I guess we can go ahead and up our enrichment of, of uranium, and now that is going to be cause somehow for Israel to go to war with Iran. And after Israel goes to war with Iran, we're going to be there to back them up. So you see, we don't have to be the bad guys in this. We don't actually have to be the ones to declare war. Israel will do it, and they're our allies, and we have to back them up. So that is... Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. That's how we're going to end up going to war with Iran. But he's not done. I want you to see more of these clips that he has because uh, it's shocking and, and angering. Here's what they're trying to do. They're trying to break our will, intimidate us to come to the negotiating table. The president made an offer to negotiate. The response was to attack a Japanese tanker, the emissary of the person chosen to deliver the offer. And last night, they shot down a drone. So here's what Iran needs to get ready for. Severe pain inside their country. That their capabilities pale in comparison to ours. We're not going to let them disrupt navigation of the seas, attack our allies and U.S. interests without paying a price. So if they're itching for a fight, they're going to get one. I don't know if they're the ones itching for the fight. I mean, we were, after all, using that drone to spy on them, and we have no evidence that they actually attacked those ships. In fact, it's way more likely, knowing the U.S.'s history, that we're the ones who did something to those ships, that it was either the CIA or it was Israel. It was some operative of ours that went and attacked those ships. It's way more likely, given the United States' history. Now, that would be unfair to say if we didn't have the history we have of, of documents now that have been declassified proving that we have engaged in sabotage in order to go to war. But we have all of this information, decades worth of it. So we know that it's possible the United States is actually trying to provoke this war, trying to get enough uh, so that the American people will be behind this war. That is, that is what it's looking like, because obviously Israel wants to do it. And as soon as Israel goes, we're going to go. And we need to have a reason so that the American people aren't sitting there saying, but why, but why? Well, now they could say, well, but they've been attacking us and our allies. See, look what they did to this Japanese tanker. Look what they did to the Norwegian tanker. And look what they did to our drone. See, see? So he's not done. If next week they go back into enrichment, putting them back on a path to a bomb, which they're wrong anyway, then that escalates the tension between Israel and Iran. 
if they do anything else against an American asset, and this president doesn't respond like Ronald Reagan, then that's a signal to North Korea and the entire world we're all talk. Uh-huh, so see what he's doing there. So he's trying to say that, well, if Trump does nothing about this, then the rest of the world is going to think we're weak, and he can't be weak, we can't be weak, and so he has to go to war. That is a really good way to talk someone into war, is you say, you don't want to be perceived as a weak president, do you? No, you don't. We need to go to war. So see what he did there. He says, oh, well, North Korea will see it. Well, North Korea has already been ignoring us. They've already been testing their missiles and building nukes. So what is that going to show North Korea? That they're already not doing. They're already doing these things. So I don't, you know, if anything, North Korea showed Iran what to do, not the other way around. So he continues. You say the U.S. will aid Israel. Help people understand what does that if mean. Israel, U.S. military involvement? A hundred percent. If they go back into the enrichment business that puts them on an accelerated path to bomb, and Israel has to defend itself against an existential threat, I am confident we will be there. Okay, so he just said if Israel... I can't say it enough. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. I'm just very excited, Akiyam. Israel is needing to go to war, that we're going to be there. When she says, what does that mean? Help us understand what does that mean? Does that mean basically uh, backing up with war? And he says, yeah, that's exactly what that means. I'm confident if there's a war with Iran, they lose. Oh, he's confident that if there's a war with Iran, they would lose. I don't know where he gets his confidence because I don't know what conflict we've gone in in, in the last several years, decades, that has actually resulted in a win. Uh, the last time we tried to do something, I mean, well, several times that we've tried to do this, we have not left countries in better situations. We've lost. Uh, the Vietnam War comes to mind. And I got to say that the Iranian, if we were to go to war with Iran, it would be much more like the Vietnam War than it would be like any other engagement we've been in. And there is a big chance that we would not win, that Iran would slaughter our men and women that we send over there in droves. It would not be good. None of us want this. In fact, no one I know wants this. Even. And if you're a U.S. serviceman or service woman, expect your final resting place to be in the Middle East. Also a part of prophecy. This is Joel chapter 2, verse 20. 